term root causes of migration is often used in political discourse around particularly unwanted immigrants or unwanted migration, often from developing countries. So while this is an often used term, it actually lacks a clear definition. So today we will be defining this term in this video and discussing which root causes actually matter for migration based on new publications and research coming out of the Big Next project. Hi, my name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. So let's get into it. The 2015 European Trust Fund for Africa funds development projects with the objective to contribute to migration management as well as addressing the root causes of destabilization, forced displacement, and irregular migration, in particular promoting resilience, economic and equal opportunities, security and development, and addressing human rights abuses. All right, so this is just one example of the many ways that the term root causes of migration is used in policy and programming. However, there is no clear definition of what is actually meant by this. And this is where the MIGNEX project comes in. Now I have discussed the MIGNEX project on my channel before, and of course I will link the project and the publications for this video um, in the description below. And this video is really based on two key publications coming out of the MIGNEX project, which is the MIGNEX background paper on the multi-level determinants of the migration process and the MIGNEX policy brief, what are the root causes of migration? So be sure to check those out. So what are root causes? So the MIGNEX project is the first to propose a definition or a clear definition of what this means. And that is that root causes of migration are widely experienced hardships to which migration is a possible response that are perceived to be persistent, immediately threatening, or both, okay? So when defining the term, several issues were taken into account, okay? So the first is that root causes are defined based on the concepts own terms as proposed by the policy community, which aims to make its logic clear, all right? So it's really kind of taking how this term is often used by the policy community. And now to be clear, this is not an endorsement of the MIGNEX project for it being used in this way, but it's a necessary step towards assessing whether, when, or how the concept can be analytically valuable, all right? Now, the second point is that the definition deliberately takes into account both forced and voluntary migration and covers kind of all different forms of hardship. So according to this definition, an example of root causes is, for example, protracted economic stagnation, which is a widely experienced hardship. People find it hard to make a living and this is persistent. Another example is violent conflict. So again, which is widely experienced hardship where people's lives are at risk and it is immediately threatening. So a third issue that's important to take into account is that many hardships that could affect migration are not root causes um, in this definition. So these are hardships that are likely to pass or that are particular to individuals, like for example, the death of a household member or an accident that causes disability. Also an example of this would be low quality of particular public services, unless combined failures severely undermine livelihoods or living conditions. Now, hardships that are manageable and likely to pass also like epidemic outbreaks or floods, unless they are regular occurrences that would make them persistent, would not be considered root causes. So it's also important to remember that many other influences contribute to determining whether root causes actually result in migration aspirations. 
For instance, you know, if people have higher levels of trust in society, this might make it more likely that they are to stay in their community and try to address these grievances locally rather than wanting to migrate. And this is something that we also find in the MIGNEX project. So more generally then, root causes only affect whether people have migration aspirations. That is, whether they see migration as desirable or necessary and make preparations to migrate. So if you want to see more on migration aspirations, you can check out a previous video on this channel and of course the MIGNEX work on these issues. So whether someone actually migrates depends on many other factors, including policy measures that restrict migration. And now perhaps one of the biggest challenges with the term root causes is that it comes from a framing that sees migration as problematic or as a problem. Migration can be problematic, including for migrants themselves, but migration can also bring with it many opportunities. So already framing migration as problematic from the beginning is problematic in itself. So what root causes actually matter for migration? So using Big Next data, researchers in the project tested whether root causes explain whether people wish to migrate or have started preparations to do so. The findings are that some hardships matter more than others. So for example, people are more likely to want to leave communities if they see limited opportunities to earn a living and feed a family and where corruption is widespread. Now, people are also more likely to want to leave if they distrust government institutions and are discontent with public services. Levels of poverty play the opposite role. People who are poorer or live in poorer communities are both less able and less likely to want to migrate. On the other hand, Safety, security, and environmental issues are much less relevant hardships in explaining migration aspirations, which is in direct contrast to the attention that they often receive in the media and in political discourses. Another very important point is that root causes only provide part of the explanation for migration. People have different personalities, different willingness for risk, and different ambitions in life more generally. And all of this influences whether someone wishes to migrate. What also really matters is knowing how migration works from one's own experiences from migrating or from others in a community who have migrated. And while researchers found some general trends, they also saw contradictory patterns across different local areas. For example, environmental hazards and stresses increased migration aspirations in some local areas, decreased it in other areas, and had no effect in most of the areas. So there's not one consistent set of determinants of migration that holds universally. Now, for more on the implications of this research for policy and policy approaches, please check out the MIGNEX policy brief linked in the description below. You can find out a lot more information there. And of course, if you found this video useful, please feel free to share it. And as always, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that notification bell to make sure that you don't miss any of the content that we upload on a regular basis on different migration issues. And I definitely hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.